This is the Week in Sustainability from Sustain Life. It's where our team of sustainability experts and practitioners share commentary to keep you up to date on developing stories and news. My name is Mitch Voss, and I'm a senior director here in our sustainability team at Sustain Life. For this week's edition, what we're going to be talking about are our predictions for 2024. What are going to be some of the key themes and things that both corporates as well as individuals should be looking at, thinking about, and really, what do we think 2024 is going to mean for everyone in sustainability? Uh, one of the first things I want to touch on and, and talk about is global supply chains. I think it's something we definitely saw last year as a, a major push for both big corporate organizations as well as individual consumers, all the way through to you know, your tier one, tier two suppliers being really concerned and having a strong push towards both transparency, public reporting, and basically access to data. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a major and continued push into this year. And one of the things that I'm really curious to see and, and basically be able to, to dig into are how AI and some of the other tools that exist out there are going to be able to both speed up some of these processes, make things more transparent, transparent, and provide further insights into global supply. It's one of the things that, you know, as large corporates and, and others are, are certainly being more vigilant or uh, requesting further data, I think it's uh, something that we, we've all certainly seen, especially if you are in, for example, one of those tier two, tier three, uh, suppliers that are now being asked for data, there's going to likely be a stronger push for that. Um, you know, there's plenty of examples of what is driving this, you know, whether that be consumer pressure all the way through to organizations that are setting things like science-based targets, focusing on decarbonization, or wanting to make sure that they're working with the best vendors or suppliers in their network to be able to have access to that data. I think that's only going to be improving this year or maybe not improving, but uh, being increased pressure for those suppliers to provide that data. Um, I, I also think that, you know, there's a regulatory push for this too. I think that's going to be driving a lot of this, um, emphasizing that need for uh, both have, having robust calculation methodologies, having access to that data for individual uh, suppliers all the way through to end customers. To be able to share and validate that what an organization is saying that they're, they're doing, for example, decarbonizing their value chain is actually being done. Um, I think, you know, there's also the looming question of SEC disclosure. Uh, this is something that, you know, a, a lot of folks are currently debating or um, can be a bit of a hot topic in terms of what will happen with the SEC disclosure. And I think it's something that's also going to be driving a lot of action or preparedness for individual organizations. I think with the looming SEC regulation and, and what could, could not be coming, organizations are gonna be spending a lot of time preparing for, thinking about, and ultimately waiting at this point to see what the requirements are gonna be. Um, you know, one of the things I, I might urge organizations that are concerned with or thinking about the regulation is to not wait. Um, that there's a lot you could be doing. And if the regulation comes out, and for example, you have to start calculating your scope three emissions, you have to start preparing yourself for assurance. Um, you have to start getting ready for that third party assurance or audit that is potentially going to be required as part of the SEC regulation. Uh, I would recommend getting started today that, you know, it, it it's something that takes repetition to get right. Uh, there's certainly the argument too, you know, perfect is not the enemy of good, uh, that even getting started with, for example, just getting your scope one and two, and maybe some of the simple scope three categories under your belt is going to make you that much more prepared should the SEC regulation come through and not require you to do it. Other thing that we've certainly seen last year, and I think is going to be a big key theme in 2024, is the harmonization of reporting. Everything from you know, for example, CSRD coming out, TCFD alignment, things like that is something we're going to see more and more. I think a really great example of that that we saw at the end of last year was SBTI aligning their SME pathway or uh, small medium enterprise pathway 
with the CSRD requirements. Um, something that certainly caught me by surprise that, for example, at up until the end of, of last year, um, one of the requirements was that an organization that was less than 500 employees could follow the SME pathway. Now, however, that's been changed to align to CSRD. Uh, and with that, it's now 250 employees or less in order for you to follow that pathway and, and not have to follow the uh, corporate standard. Now, it, just with that example, I think it's something we're going to see more and more of with the existing regulations, with the things that are out there right now, uh, that further and further, that alignment is going to make it hopefully a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more comprehensible for organizations that are, are required to follow these regulations and requirements. Um, and hopefully it's something that we see uh, continue to happen just to make it that much easier for someone that is reporting or having to report these various to these various requirements. Um, another topic I want to touch on or for one of my big predictions for this year is going to be the emphasis or the impact that private equity is going to have on the sustainability space. I think it's something that we've seen a huge push for, uh, uptick in, and an impact on, for example, portfolio companies in the past two, three years. One great organization uh, or initiative I want to call out is, is EDCI, or the ESG Data Convergence Initiative. For private equity firms and individual portfolio companies, it really supports and standardizes what they need to report. And so rather than, you know, for example, every investor, every individual asking for uh, separate requirements from, for example, these portfolio companies or, or cross funds and things like that, it really streamlines and outlines, hey, here's what you need to report and here's what you need to provide to us in order to basically allow us to benchmark and, and look across uh, what your peers and competitors are doing. It provides a lot more transparency, makes it a lot more easier for the folks that are having to do that work and do the reporting. And, and ultimately, I think we're going to see more and more of that. Uh, one of the, the really great things that happened with that, and, and just to kind of emphasize the point that private equity is going to continue that impact or is going to continue to be a driver for sustainability with those that, that they're engaged with, is that uh, EDCI, for example, now added a new requirement at the end of last year for this year's reporting, asking about net zero strategy and towards decarbonization, what individual portfolio companies are doing. I think that's a, a great indicator towards where we're hopefully going to see that space start to move towards, because that no longer is just giving the numbers out and doing the reporting going to be enough, that it's also going to be an evaluation of, okay, you now know where you are today. You now have the numbers for your inventory. What are you going to do to start to reduce those? And I think that both the effect and influence that that Tonnesley Capital has on each one of these port codes and and you know with uh, that level of funding or with what's being provided and, and the valuations that are being done against some of those metrics, I, I think it's really going to have a strong impact for any of those port codes that are reporting. I think it's going to kind of trigger that question of, okay, we're being asked to report this now. What's our response? What is our, our stance towards something like, for example, a net zero strategy or towards something like us actually pushing towards decarbonization, whether that's something formal, like a science-based target, whether that's something more informal, like we're evaluating our spending methods, we're evaluating our opportunities within our, our supply chain, evaluating things like something as simple as renewable energy. Um, I shouldn't say something as simple because it, it can become very complicated, but what are the opportunities that we have as a you know, portfolio company and, and how we engage with, for example, a PE firm, what opportunities do we have to truly start to decarbonize in a meaningful way? And, and I think, you know, just again, with the, the level of uh, capital that is being provided and, and the emphasis that's being put on these portfolio companies, it, it's really going to drive meaningful action in 2024. One final prediction I have for 2024 is the emphasis that ESG and sustainability is going to have in the boardroom. I, I think it's something that we've seen, you know, more and more especially leading up to, and, and you know, this is a bit more of a North American focus, but leading up to the proposed SEC ruling, ESG has certainly taken 
prominence over some of the conversations that happen in the boardroom, whether that be a positive conversation or potentially a a more conflictive conversation or or something that does require a lot of debate within boardrooms. Uh, it, it's certainly picked up towards the end of, of 2023. And I think it's only going to basically take more prominence. I think as 2024 progresses, we're, we're certainly going to see more of these conversations happening at the board level, happening at, uh, for example, you know, thinking again about SEC preparedness, but not only that, um, things like greenwashing. And making sure that you know we are being perceived in the market in a fair and equitable way that what we say we're doing truly represents our intentions as an organization. That those types of conversations are, are certainly going to be more prominent. I think it's it's one of the reasons we potentially saw, uh, and again, this is totally anecdotally and and on um, based on my experiences and, and engagements over uh, towards the end of 2023, uh, a bit of a downturn in those uh, seeking carbon offsets, as an example, that instead of looking at uh, just quote unquote, purchasing your way out of it, or uh, just purchasing strict offsets to be able to meet or be able to, to say, these are some of the goals and things that we've achieved, that companies are instead now focusing on true decarbonization, looking at things like their energy efficiency, being able to um, become more energy efficient, uh, reduce their their scope one, two emissions that way, as well as looking at um, renewable energy. I, I think it's something we've seen a, a big uptick in towards the end of last year. Uh, I know for sure that the PPA and VPPA markets are, are becoming a bit more difficult to get into, again, depending where you are geographically. Um, it's something that we've also seen um, a, a bit of volatility or a bit more of an uptick in, in rec markets um, that, you know, I think companies are, are truly searching for rather than just the uh, offsets that are, are out there um, through likely some of those conversations in, in the boardroom and you know some of the conversations I've been a part of that uh, there's a quite honestly a fear of greenwashing, a fear of of us uh, or as an organization coming in and and you know making this purchase, making this claim and, and not truly being backed by the evidence or the actions that they're taking. Um, I think those conversations are certainly going to continue into 2024 and likely take a more meaningful impact on what companies are doing to truly decarbonize, decarbonize uh, and actually do what they say they're going to do. That'll wrap it up for this week. Thanks for listening and looking forward to, to seeing you all in the next one. Sustain Life is the leading and most comprehensive sustainability software on the market. To learn how we can help your company measure its emissions and take climate action, go to sustain.life. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this show on our YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.